This is the kilogram. Not a kilogram, the kilogram, the British National Standard Kilogram at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington. It's a lump of platinum iridium alloy. It's kept in a very, very secure safe just under here, and it weighs, well, one kilogram. Mass measurement around the world needs to be equivalent. So if I buy something in, in America that's a milligram or a kilogram or 100 tonnes, I need to know that it's equivalent to a kilogram or a milligram, 100 tonnes in, in the UK. The, the real key areas of interest where the uncertainties are very important are, for example, the pharmaceutical industry, where you're dealing with very, very small quantities of active ingredients, and you have to measure them very, very accurately. So when, say, your bathroom scales were manufactured, they were tested against equipment that was tested against equipment that several chains down the line later was tested against something like this. And this was tested against the international prototype kilogram in Paris. And this is a really weird thing to wrap your head around, but that one in Paris, it always weighs a kilogram. It doesn't matter if it's gained a tiny amount of mass from absorbing air contaminants or lost a tiny amount when it was cleaned. It is one kilogram. We know that the international prototype is probably not stable because all its copies are unstable relative to itself. But there's nothing more, there's nothing above the international prototype that can, you can compare it with to tell whether it's changing or not. Defining international standards by a physical thing is not ideal, so in the next few years scientists around the world are deciding what the 21st century standard should be. The formal definition will be based on physics, likely Planck's constant, but how do you make that into a physical thing? There are two options. First, a fixed number of atoms. You manufacture one kilogram spheres of almost pure single crystal silicon very re relatively easily. Um, what you have to measure here is the lattice spacing, i.e. How, how far the atoms are apart in the sphere, and the, the volume of the sphere. Um, and both of those are measurements you can make at the level of uncertainty where you can generate a sphere which is, um, has an accuracy of a part in 10 to the 8, roughly. The downside of that is it costs you 2.5 million euros per sphere. Finding the kilogram that way seems to make sense with measuring mass after all, but there is an alternative which could be cheaper and easier, although it isn't quite as obvious. The watt balance is an electrical way of measuring mass. This is a way of demonstrating simply how a watt balance works. We have a loudspeaker here, and if I pass a current through the coil of the loudspeaker, you can see that the cone will move up and move down. If I was to put a mass on here, if I restore the position of the mass, the current I need to do that is a measure of the weight of that mass. The problem I've got is that I don't know the strength of the field of the magnet or the number of turns on the coil. And I can do a second experiment by moving the cone of the, of the speaker like that. If I was to measure the velocity I was, with which I was moving that, and also measure the voltage that was produced, that would tell me that quantity and allow me to eliminate it from the two experiments, which, if done accurately, is enough to work out the weight of that mass. Whichever approach gets chosen, there will still be physical reference kilograms in the world. They're not going away. But for the first time, we're going to have something absolute to compare them against. Thank you to everyone at the National Physical Laboratory. They have a YouTube channel that you can check out, and they occasionally hold open days. Details are on their website.